yeah what's up guys i'm juggy moron uh, that was rather awkward uh <laughs> i'm a streamer league of legends and tft player i mainly play tft now because i'm tilted at league um aside from that i've reached d2 in season 9 preseason and i peaked d3 in season 9 um my most recent accomplishment was the 10-0 nocturne only account in placements and since then i haven't really played much league uh due to the jungle nerfs but yeah glad uh, to be here. cool dragon wants to know why do you look like a barbarian in modern day uh it's because i've got a big beard and i'm greek it's so this answer, is what the actually. majority of greek people look like cool dragon <laughs> is, that, is, that, uh, is that does that satisfy your, your, your uh your, your thirst i guess guys in chat you're welcome to drop questions if they are if there's anything in particular that pops up uh, we'll be looking at chat at the same time. Why is your name Jungling Moron? There we go. Uh, well, before I was a jungle main, I was a top lane main by uh, top lane Moron. And my junglers just kept on being trash, so I went for Jungling Moron instead. And then I became a jungle main again. I, I switched remember. between the two roles. There was a, there was a top lane Moron, Jungling Moron, and then there was another one, wasn't there? I could have uh, sworn there was a third. Oh god, his waifu. Mine, that was a yeah. Yeah. Um. Alright, Dragon saying his, his statement. It was a statement, not a question. True, but I tweaked it a bit, dude. Just uh, <laughs> trying try to encourage some, some sort of inter chat uh, communications game. Uh, yeah, I've, I've, I've yeah. played jungle for a long time and top lane for a long time too, so if there's any questions regarding that, feel free to ask. Famous stealing one of my questions from my my list of, of questions. He says, "What's uh, what, what got you into jungle over other roles?" Okay, so theoretically, jungle is the most impactful, or arguably rather, is the most impactful role in League of Legends. So, if you are wanting to climb, in my opinion, that's where you want to go more so than top lane, which I feel is an island you don't really impact the map aside from every six minutes where you can maybe make a tp play or if you're playing someone who just wants to roam like quinn that works too would but you say that that's the same this season in. even though prior to this patch there was uh, like a lot of jungle experience nerfs um, yeah so prior to this season so season nine that was very um, much the case i mean i played for stp the south african team in top lane and from there i went into jungle this season jungle changes it basically meant that better jungle never won because you could go and invade the enemy jungle you could put him behind two levels just by better pathing better clearing but if he goes and sits in a lane or if his lanes keep dying and he can catch up xp through that and it's just not worth your time to invade whereas now in this most recent patch it's uh, more beneficial and it's better for the jungles jungler mains now okay yeah, fair enough um slightly off topic but uh dragon wants to know why do you wear your headphones over your your uh, hoodie uh i prefer it because if i don't have it it's too loud on my ears have you ever considered turning like considered turning the volume down i have i have it's it doesn't work i've got like sensitive um hearing I okay. guess. So, coronavirus. Uh, it's <laughs> True, it's happening. Yeah, it's it's... No, so... it's, it's, it's a habit more so than anything else. Yeah, fair enough. What's, uh, wh when did you first start playing League? Like, which season? Uh, season 2 I started. So, I started when it was still MMR based. So, you didn't actually have ranks. You had, um, you had the numbers. Elo value, yeah. You had the ELO. Yeah, the ELO value. I think I was silver to bronze when I started, and then yeah. the following season when they actually introduced rankings, I got silver again. So you didn't get the victorious Java, I think it was the first season. I was Java. No, no, no. Yeah, I didn't get either victorious Java or Jenna or Elise. I, oh, no, wait, you, I think you, I got. No, I didn't get Elise. You no. didn't get Elise. Yeah, I was silver when it was the Elise time. Okay. Because victorious Jana was season two, and then yeah. season three, I think, was victorious Elise. Yeah. Yeah, uh, I didn't get it. At season three, I was still silver. I was like silver one. Dak wants to know what's your what's your opinion on on Warwick at the moment of the current meta? Uh, probably one of the stronger, uh, stronger, early stronger junglers. Um, I personally don't see a lot of him because high skill cap champ. Play him. <laughs> exactly, dude. Exactly. 
people who play him generally either pop off or they're absolute shit. It, it feels like it's a champion that you, if you want to do well with it, you've got to put in a little bit of effort or a little bit of games because if you yeah, don't know how to clear no, it properly with him, you're not going to do anything. As well as that game changing Q follow mechanic, did hold Q versus yeah. always click Q? Exactly, exactly. What's, uh, what's also, whenever I play him, I just straight up lose. Same, don't worry. I've got a video of that. If you guys haven't checked out, it was one of the first <laughs> videos on the YouTube channel. I got to duck in, which is a Masters Season 9 Warwick like, meme to try to coach me in the jungle. It did not go well, so if you guys do want to find that, make sure to check out the YouTube channel. He's no anime talk? What? Did you mention anime? Oh, yeah, no, right, Sinister. Alright, right, right, right. Okay, we'll save that question for it. So, yeah, go for it. I watch South Park at the moment. I mean, the, uh, I think that's like saying Cory in the house is your favorite anime. Exactly, dude. <laughs> I'm not right. watching anime at the moment. Fair enough. <clears throat> um, so if you guys just joining us now, basically we've got John Lee Moore in his uh, X Diamond League player slash like streamer at the moment. I don't know why it's added at the moment at the end there. Uh, we get, we, we're getting a minute to just discuss sort of like uh, good practices, advice, all that kind of stuff with regards to see, like like climbing in League of Legends, as well as like just general game related topics. I mean, if you guys have any questions, by all means drop it in chat. Uh, we covered a little bit of your backstory. So you said your peak rank, did you say D2? Yeah, D2 in okay. uh, preseason. So while it, <clears throat> sorry, while it doesn't necessarily count, uh, I was hard stuck D4 for the entirety of season eight. Okay. And uh, oh, sorry, not D4. It was D5 back then. I was hard stuck D5, yeah. D4 for the entirety of season eight. Got into preseason. I started changing up my play style a bit. I started changing up the way I viewed the game, and I managed to climb to D2 before the okay. season. Okay. Do you want um, to and... elaborate on that a bit? Like, what? Uh, what in particular? Like, how did you change? Change up. Yeah. Like, what was the original viewpoint versus like what you changed? So beforehand, I was playing more um, micro champions such as Irelia, um, uh, so Fiora, stuff like champs, that. Right, right. Yeah, more mechanical champs. While they were more fun to play and you did have your pop-off games, most of the time you couldn't impact the map as much as you would have liked to. So I changed it up. I did some research on the top champions. Kled was one of them. Shen was one of them. And I started uh, playing between those two, as well as Urgot, because back then Urgot was still pretty so disgusting. You, you sort of just followed the meta, I guess, the next step. But I mean, like, how is that different to what you'd been doing before? I mean, like, were you just playing whatever you felt like playing, or like? Uh, I mainly played like Irelia, Jax. I played mainly split pushing type champs. Why? Well, so how did you I find guess... the split push mentality and play champion pool? So with the split pushing mentality. Uh, I didn't really think much of my teammates because obviously being hard stuck D5, yeah. D4, once you're hard stuck for a while, you start get uh, getting pretty shitty teammates. Mentality they, drops as well. You sort of feel like yeah, you're getting held exactly. Back. I gotcha. Yeah, you can't, you can't, you can't necessarily. So when you're like hard stuck and you're below fifty percent win rate, you start getting other fifty percent win rate players, and immediately when you see that, you're like, oh god, why? So yeah. you start playing the game um, already at a disadvantage. You. So I would play split pushes to try and counteract the fact that in a 5v5 we're probably going to lose, which I really, I really came into the game without any prior knowledge, just by viewing their ranks, which yeah. is probably the, which is the wrong thing to do at the time. So almost uh, like a trick to G mentality where you feel like the rest of the team is yeah. irrelevant, you have to sell the character of the game, but through top lanes. Basically, yeah. Yeah, exactly. So that's why so that's why I went split pushes because if someone went to tank into my split pushes, it really didn't matter. I'll just destroy them. Okay. But if I went into another fight a brawl, it was a more interesting matchup. So um, it's it's interesting that like for example you, you peaked in, in top lane, but then you switched to jungle at a later stage, but you haven't been able to get back to that point. Do you feel like it's because of the change in role, or was it just like what do what what are your thoughts on? Yeah. Uh, I don't think it's necessarily the change in role. I think back then I honestly did my best. I tried, I did like, you know, I put in all the effort to climb and last season, season nine, I trolled the shit out of it. I played Yorick 10 games in a row, pre uh, placements and went 0-10. Okay. So uh, that was a good start. Um, and also I played a lot of my games on stream, which doesn't yeah. necessarily help you if you're trying to climb. Um, because I'm not necessarily a challenger player. I'm not a great player, right? So playing on stream already, it's taking concentration away from yep. the game. So distracting yourself will 
not necessarily allow climbing that easily. I mean, honestly, like, I, I don't think, unless you've streamed yourself, like, in the past playing League, uh, like, like, trying, the, the amount of, like, concentration you actually lose from the game by streaming it while you're playing, mm. it's actually insane. Like, you, I never even realized before I started streaming, like, it's like, if you, if you, let's say you play the standard, like, like, default level, right, that's your ELA you're supposed to be at, blah, blah, blah. If you stream, you're, you're dropping, you're suddenly not looking at the minimap as often, you're not like watching rotations, you're not necessarily paying attention to summoner spawns and stuff like that because you're looking at chat instead, you're interacting, you're, you're like subconscious isn't like focuses on the game, it's, it's some way else, so suddenly you're no longer playing at a default level, at like a low rank. Uh, yeah. and that, that definitely, definitely affects like the way that you play and that like, I guess negatively impacts you as well i guess a lot of people it'll be different for but let's say you make a misplay it's gonna be a lot different having people see you make that misplay versus like if you're playing by yourself where you just shrug it off uh i don't necessarily agree with the last part but everything else i do agree okay. with for me personally if i make a misplay it's not the end of the world it's like i mean name me a player who hasn't made a mistake in any game you know what i mean it, it happens you're human you make mistakes true so the thing is that the moment you start being like on stream ah oh, shit people saw that then all of a sudden your mental's dipping even if you're not even on the stream and you're just by yourself you're like oh crap i made a mistake and you, your mental dips so if you're playing a game competitively you got to try and keep your mental up and by competitively i mean attempting to climb yeah if your intentions are to get you there i gotcha yeah okay fair enough um so with, with regards to trying to improve or like get better at the game uh, to, to gain elo taking it seriously let's say in the scenario that someone does want to get better climb um okay. in your in your opinion how how often or like should like what's the best approach do you just spam games you play a bunch of of uh like solo queue what is like what is your go-to uh, practice regime i guess okay so when i was climbing or the intention is to climb obviously this is off stream you know this is I'm trying to grind elo right? right so what I would do is I would say okay five games a day that that was my number I would why, play five why, games why a day five? if I because I like the uh, odd number because I could technically go three two or two one or you know something like that way okay, so I always could necessarily a, always get a better like, number know. yeah yeah so when I would do that I went um if I lost two games in a row I took a break I would either go play another game, go watch some TV, go watch a series. Okay, so uh, how, how book, long would know, a break get... be in, like, in general? 20 to 30 minutes, I would say, is a decent amount of time. Depending, It's depending if you're tilting, right? If you're tilting, mm -hmm. if you're not tilted after the two games, you played as well as you did in the first game you played and you um, won that game, and you played as well, but you just got unlucky, then I wouldn't take the break. But if I made mistakes and I know it's just that game, I tilted so hard, um, I wouldn't play it because if i tilt i know that the next game i'm going into i'm already going in a deficit so you can't you've got to basically refresh your mental every game and if your mental's good then you can keep playing okay fair enough um so would you only take breaks on games that you uh, lost or if you felt like you was you were like like mentally fatigued or Tired like tilted and, yeah, that kind of thing yeah, definitely so it, you can also just get fatigued just by playing the game. Um, it's fatigue in anything. If you've got all yep. your concentration on that thing, you get fatigued relatively quickly. So I would, if I was tilted, I would take a longer break. If it was just fatigue or something, I would take a shorter break in which I would um, go make some coffee, go for a smoke, go do this, go do that, uh, what have you. You know, okay. short like five minutes, just resets, something like that. Uh, have you always done this or was this just something that you implemented or you found uh, to... yeah no it was it was that was like my climbing four tiers or something when i was when i actually when i actually climbed that was what i did okay. so it's not something i implement now because now i i don't see the point in trying to climb and it's not because i'm tilted at the game or the game's crap or anything like that it's just i know myself that i probably could reach a high level like diamond one maybe at max somewhere around there if i did what i was doing before but i just don't see the point in doing it the, because yeah, i'm the, having more fun yeah, streaming making content. Of, like, yeah uh, investing the amount of time etc as well as it's like yeah. stressful it's like mentally taxing it, like, it affects like everything definitely. i guess definitely because basically when you're trying to get like 
Okay, say you're 16 years old and you want to take League of Legends, which I would say don't do it because it's a dying game. Go for <laughs> another game. But you want to go competitive and you want to become a pro in League of Legends, right? And you yourself are silver. It's not going to happen, but it's it's not. There's no... There's If you've been silver for three seasons, you're not going to get to professional level. You can climb, you can become a high ELO player, sure, but you'll never get to professional level. People who get to professional level most of the time have been playing the game for maybe a year and they've started and they immediately start climbing because it's just it's just the way it works in yeah, my opinion. Yeah, it's sort of almost like a talented extent with like sports yeah. and stuff. Uh, I mean, like, there's a lot of, you can put in a lot of hard work and time and investment and stuff like that, but if you compare that to someone who's just naturally, like, talented with regards to certain, like, like, you'll have a, you'll have a kid at school who is good at every sport he plays, just because, like, the way they're just brought up as well as, like, I guess genetics to an extent? Yes. Like, everyone has their, their specialties or their, like, what they're, they're good at. So to get to that yeah. pro level, it's sort of a combination of hard work as well as just being naturally talented exactly so like that's that's my opinion right i could climb i could climb to higher elo but what would the purpose of that be for me currently i'm 25 years old i enjoy playing league of legends with friend i enjoy playing it competitively in 5v5s so i've joined a, a versus gaming team i don't think i would ever become a professional or semi-professional player so i just going i'm going to play the game for fun and you know if people want to watch that or whatever then they can so you know i'll play the game on stream not really take it that seriously and so forth okay we got you so yeah. um when you were try holding or when you were looking to try again like as high rank as possible how much like research did you put into it? like for example research being like looking into iron bulls trying to find what yeah. picks are strong all that kind of stuff so i basically found um a few I mean, there's, there's lots of different guides out there, right? You know, there's so many different resources you can use to try and figure out which is the strongest champion. But I knew my playstyle, right? I, I knew I liked champions that could split push, but I realized I needed something that could be also relevant in a team, uh, a team fight situation. Um, so I picked, I looked at champions like that, and I came to the conclusion that Chen's pretty good because he split pushes, but impacts the map really well. So does Kled. Kled split pushes, but when he ults, it just changes a team fight around completely. So I looked at those two champions, and those were the two I decided that they basically fit my playstyle and what I wanted to do. So by doing that, I went, um, you know, I, I looked up builds for the champions. I looked up um, high ranked OTPs of the champions okay. and saw what they were building. Uh, I, I started like, you know, researching, okay, so if I'm going into an AP matchup, would this start be better or this start be better? You know, it was just stuff like that. But the research itself faded out to a point, and you've just actually got to get experience and play the game because you yourself will know what to do in certain situations the more experienced you are. So probably the first five or six games on Kled, I made some mistakes. Like, I knew, I saw, like, some of the um, mechanics you should have done, right? Same thing with Chen. I saw some of the mechanics you can do, but I made the mistakes. Um, I made mistakes doing it. And instead of getting tilted at it, I was like, okay, so what could I have done better there that it wouldn't have happened? What could I have built that, that I wouldn't have died in that situation? So yeah. I think it's it's basically you've got to go like 60-40 in terms of experience versus um, research. So playing you, versus you do research, need that right? research. Yeah, um, so 64 any, um, experience. Any like, sites in particular that you used or you think were pretty good when it comes to research? So if you're looking at top tier players, um, uh, if you search champion on op.gg, it'll show you in the right hand corner people who play the ch uh, people who've mastered yeah, the champions. champions. Right. Um, you can also look at u.gg or pro builds. Okay. Like those are the three I would say are best. If you if you really think Korea is the greatest region to ever exist, you could probably use uh, what's it called? Korean, Korean builds, yeah. Korean builds, yeah. Korean builds, you could use that too. But in, back then, there was I didn't look at Korean builds. I mainly used op.gg and. Um, League of Graphs to see what who the best players were and if they streamed I would like to look at their streams or look at their YouTube content. Fair enough. Uh, cool Dragon wants to know what your what was your thoughts on set on release and uh, why why was he released in the state that he was? So Riot's every single champion, right? Riot has one of two things they do. It's either complete utter ass or it's just the most disgusting creature to ever exist, right? Think about Jinx. 
Jinx, when she was released, her W used to scale with attack speed in terms of the damage. It I remember did. that actually. <laughs> she would one shot you as an ADC with her W. Yeah. One ability. And she didn't even take like Dark Harvest or something back then. It was probably just whatever the standard rune was. She would one shot you with that ability. So Riot's always had this thing where they release new champions that it's just overtuned or undertuned. Um same thing with Silas. So I think Set, the design of Set is really cool. I like the idea of him. The fact that he gets that massive shield and that he works around shields and stuff. It's similar to like what Mordekai used to be. Yeah. Um, I think they definitely need to balance him in some aspects, but like with any champion balancing is pretty difficult because you're not only balancing that champion, you're balancing every other champion versus that champion or every other popular champion rather. And you have to balance it in terms of the items as well. So I think set is definitely overtuned, but if we if we just nerf him to the ground, he's not good. What's the point of releasing that champion? So they try to find a nice balance for him. So do I you mean, find look at Phineas, he's like still yeah, league champions when they get released, or league or right games rather intentionally releases them pretty overpowered, so that uh, people start like sort of play him or play them a lot rather, uh, as well as purchase them. I mean, it makes sense. The skins, for example, like uh, mm. they'll, they'll buff a champion when he gets a new skin, like Yumi, for example, yeah. just got buffed now, so that people Same thing with strike in purchasing the skin. Yeah, same thing with Trundle. Trundle's W got buffed, the healing, so people who play Trundle got very excited, plus they released that uh, Dragon Slayer Trundle, something. Yeah, so now they suddenly everyone's buying the skin, uh, just yeah. because, like, I mean, it makes sense financially with, like... It, yeah, it's a new company. I've, I've got, it's not a new company. It's, it's a company. They know they know how to market shit, right? You gotta, you gotta give it to them. Riot knows how to market. Um, so they're not stupid in terms of that it's the same thing with when it comes to worlds when it comes to worlds all the overtuned champions or all the undertuned champions such as lisa lisa last season was really undertuned but uh riot knew that they wanted to have him in worlds so they buffed him at the world's patch yeah so yeah i think i think riot knows what they're doing i don't necessarily think they release a champion broken they release it they would rather release it more overpowered than underpowered so people play the champ I mean, like, sure. we have the PvE, which is supposed to, in theory, test it and try to balance it and whatnot. But like, how do you? Where, where do you think PvE goes so wrong? Like, how do we? How do we fix it so that it becomes like something that's actually uh, effective? Because I mean, there's too many champs that come out and release that have been like stupidly overpowered. So it's clearly mm -hmm. not doing the job it's intended to do. I think. I think a big problem also is the PvE is playing on a patch ahead, basically. Yeah. Um, they they. They're playing on the next patch. So people who are currently in this patch um, are playing champions of a certain build, right? Now the next patch comes around, you don't necessarily have that. You usually you try to use the same build into a champion that's new. So if you haven't actually experienced him on the PvE or seen what's happened with him, it's going to be quite a shock. And I think the shock value of the champion's a lot better. I mean, people who played Set, right, um, were absolute were either guards with him because he was just overtuned or they were just the most useless piece of shit ever like yes his laning phase was strong and people were like what the heck is that and all that but yeah it didn't necessarily mean that he won the games but when you looked at his win rate it was insane because the majority of people who played him did win yeah, so i mean like for example if you were going to play set you could like just that. go jump into the pv in advance and practice them there yes. first Exactly. Like, if you see a champion on the PBE, or you, you, like they said, new jungler that they, um, Poxi or whatever it is, that they, is he on they, PBE they no, they, right. that they might release. So, when that comes out, I'm definitely going to go into the PBE and just play it, you know, because it's something I want to see. Like, Seth, I didn't really care about. I saw what he could do, and I decided, okay, that champion is just getting banned. Because if, if I don't know, if I haven't experienced it, I don't really want it in my game. Yeah, I, I, I make sure to burn it every champs. game when the champ comes down for yeah. the other key especially because you don't want it on your team, you don't want it on the enemy team, just don't let it in the lobby. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Like, what's the point of, I don't know what this champion does, I haven't played any normals against it. Like, if it was a normal game, I wouldn't care, right? I'd let someone play set if they wanted to, but in my ranked games, if I'm trying to climb, um, if I, if everyone's complaining this champ's overtuned, then it's overtuned, you know? Yeah, 100%. Um... Jeremy, what's up, dude? Welcome. Saying this rock is greater than set. Big tree. This patch, at least. But I believe they're nothing in the queue. So, yeah. we'll have to see if that's the case. Uh, I have definitely noticed a spike in mid lane, like, like 
Lucian's, for example. So, Doc mm. just saying that ranged Moblinas literally couldn't even farm for level 2 on set release. Um, was he playing mid much? Like, I thought he was mostly top. Top jungle mid, they played him everywhere. Oh, okay. Just, like, the first, pa the first patch just realized that the champion's gonna be played everywhere. It's the same thing as when they release a new champion. People want to play the champion, so they'll play it wherever. Alright, so just shifting the, the conversation back to so the queue and trying to improve and uh, with that regard, um how do you work out like what you like how do you how do you work out what you need to improve on? Like, do you have a process of ident identifying like your weak point kind of thing? Or like uh let's say um, right now you wanted to to climb, what would be your, your first step with like in the right direction? Okay, so we've uh, obviously we've discussed the champion figuring out the first step is figuring out the champions you want to play, what champs uh, suit your playstyle, right? Um, so I knew I was a split pusher, yada yada, said, uh, Shen and Kled, right? Those were the two champions. I said, I'm going to play those two champions. So the next step was then obviously looking at builds, looking at people who played them, whatever, you know, that sort of thing. Once you've done with that, now if I want to improve on those champions, the first thing is uh, experience. Now, if I'm making mistakes in the game, if it's a small mistake, a micro mistake, they always happen. In every single game you play of League of Legends, you will make a mistake. And if you don't think you made a mistake that game, go and rewatch the video, you'll see something. But you might have just placed the water pixel too small or something like that. So that's like a really minute detail, but I'm just giving an example. Yeah, I gotcha, I gotcha. A lot of people say, I've never made a mistake in a game, or who, never made a mistake who, who, in this game when you did. Tell, show me who these people are, I want to have a conversation with them, dude. That would be like... Uh... <laughs> Actually, a genuinely interesting person to talk to. But uh, what's up, Zypher? Welcome. Uh, so I think if you if you know that you made a big mistake, right? So for one example, just off the top of my head would be right. I'm making a Shen TP play or Shen ulti play, right? Now I ulti the support, the Zyra, instead of the Ash who's running away from the fight. Zyra goes in and she um, gets immediately blown up. But now I'm in the fight. It might have been better to ulti the ADC there because then they could have turned around together versus the support now just running forward like an idiot. You know what I mean? So it's like small mistakes like that. Like, if you're going to ult a support, make it an engaged support next time. That would be something that I would say to myself after that game. Okay. Rather than a disengaged support, I'll um, ult the engaged support. Or if I've got a very tanky Zac or something, or uh, something like a nowadays a set, then I could ulti that because it gets into the front line or knocked and you ulti the knocked and it gets into the back line and you're in the back line now with it. So uh, yeah. looking at mistakes like that, it's it's you you gotta see your mistake as a potential to or, or something you can learn from. So right. what I would do is if I knew I made a big mistake, I would go rewatch the game. Uh, I would look at just that particular game point or just, and say, just that like, no, yeah. no, just at that point. So I would I would note it down in my head. Okay, so about 20 minutes I need to check. The next, like as soon as that game's done, I'll go and check it. Regardless if I'm told it or not, I'll go check it because I want to see what could I have done differently, right? Right. Um, so so I look you, at that. Would you always then, go over it by uh, yourself or do you ever like speak to somebody else, potentially a higher like, ELO player to go over it with you kind of thing? Uh, no, I didn't really look at any higher ELO player to go over with it. If I was duo with someone at the time, maybe I would say, uh, what could I, you know, we would discuss it or something, because I used to play a lot with Lazy Lima. Right. Um, we would discuss what, what I could have done differently there, and he would, he would do the same thing with me. Um, but yeah, so, like, I didn't necessarily, because in my mind, I was Diamond 5, Diamond 4, you know, I, th I thought to myself, I'm relatively high elo, so the people that I have to talk to will be diamond ones just yeah. to try and get an opinion yeah. from them, and it's just not worth my time trying to find one who would look at That's it not charging something. I mean, honestly, like, uh, if you guys do, okay, let's say you're manning a champion, let's go with Sorak or something, there's often, like, clubs and stuff like that that you can join and get the tag, as well as there's going to be a bunch of high elo plays in that. Uh, honestly, if you want to get advice from someone who like means the champ as well, find someone either on the solo you ladder or in a club like that, uh, and literally just add them. Send them a message asking them some questions with regards to the champ. You'll be surprised how often like people actually do respond. Obviously, not a pro, but like just some yeah. high-level solo queue player because like you'll be surprised how often a player just wants to be appreciated for like what they've achieved with regards to like league. So some dude who's just hit challenger playing like uh, Warwick jungle or something, 
is going to be more than happy, like, a lot of the time just to give you some pointers and tips, even perhaps go over your, like, VODs with you. So just take a chance. Yeah, most people in League are pretty friendly. Uh, I remember when, I don't know if you remember Sheepy, but there used to be a live spectate thing on yeah, the front that's, page. Yeah, that was awesome. So I was playing a lot of Volley Bear Jungle at that point, and I saw a guy pop up three or four times. His name was Miracle Teddy. And I saw him pop up three or four times, and he either played Udio or Volley Bear. So I, would add, I added him, not expecting anything, and then I just asked, I did like you said. But this was back when I was like silver gold. I did what you said. Um, and yeah, he just spoke to me. He gave me a, like a point or two. Most people, yeah, like you said, most people are nice. They'll listen to you. Yeah, it was it's quite surprising. Um... Zypha dude, my, my freaking massive webcam is breaking, so that's something else I need to fix. <laughs> have to do it manually, very slowly. Uh, what do you, do you think of the original suggestion items, such as Yumi having included boots? I mean, personally, uh, I, I'd i say never never use the base default bolts that come with League of Legends, those are, those are scams. Yeah. 100%. Uh, what do you like? Wh okay, so do you ever build item sets? Are you or do you just sort of wing it? I, to I, did, I, I had item sets when I was trying to climb, um, but I would put, only put so basically the idea of item sets, right? Is either you're using them to know exactly what build is the strongest, like what you do, where you add the percent win rates in them and stuff like that, or you do the um. You just have it's to be quicker in the shop so that you already see what the item is and you can click it but majority of the time i would use the item um set just to for for speed rather than anything else what do you what's your thoughts on, on the, the the programs with regards to like like blitz that do item sets for you i think if you don't know what you're what you want to run and how to run it then I think item sets in itself is not going to help you if you don't know why you're building the item necessarily. Big tree. Because the item, you're building a randoms into a Master Yi, this, that, the other, but why are you not building Frozen Hearts? What's the reasoning behind it? So the thing is, the item sets can help you up to a point, I feel. <laughs> yeah, so Jeremy's a good example. He's a fairly new player, so he's currently in Iron 4. Obviously, he's still on placements. So he doesn't know when a ball Zani is and stuff, and items like that sort of just follows the path, which is a really bad habit to get into. Uh, any recommendations with regards to how to learn automization and stuff like that? Honestly, um, something I've learned is there are a lot of high elo players who stream, right? Challenger players, whatever, that stream. Um, when I was playing top lane, there was a guy by the name of, I don't even remember, but something PH, right? He was rank one at one point in NA, and he was a top lane main. Okay. So I raided him the one day, I chatted to him on his stream a bit. And the thing is, he's got like three or four viewers. Like, it's not going to help you if you go to your sewers chat, right? Yeah. And try and to figure out what, you know, sometimes he'll give an explanation why he does something. But more than likely, the majority of the time, he's just going to be either talking uh, in general or not very specific. But if you go to a small small viewer stream that's high elo and ask these questions they can help you a lot uh, better so that's what i would suggest <laughs> aside from yeah. experimenting yourself uh, yeah zypha asks was a guy called zypha dude <laughs> <laughs> for sure dude yeah yeah it was it was definitely zypha jeremy says fat joe extra dart dude so punished <laughs> Um, I'll have a look if I can see him. Yeah, no, okay, I mean, I, I kind of agree with you to an extent. I mean, honestly, I don't think going to a pro player streamer is the best option for learning itemizations, or like, like for example, what an item does or which scenario to use it in. Uh, I feel like that's probably better off, like, YouTubing, just YouTubing the item or explanations or something. Like that. I'm sure you can find tons of content. Otherwise, you can actually just use the leak wiki. What's up, Yogi? Yeah. Uh, good job on the D1, by the way, dude. Uh, so just going to like these these websites that are available public knowledge and just look like honestly you like even as a, as a player like myself or, or, like if you've been playing the game for a while like if you just read through some of the items you'll actually notice stuff on it that you may not have actually known of beforehand there's like small things exactly. even with the, like abilities on champions that you play i mean personally i know duck reads through his abilities uh when he's learning a champion but i've 
sort of always just approached it from I've played so many games that I, I know what it does kind of thing. Mm. So there's small little things that you can actually learn from just taking the time to read through it. I mean, I still don't know how the double Sonya's thing works. Something I could have learnt. I don't even know if it's still in uh, uh, a thing that can happen. Uh, yeah, you can get the stuff watch from the uh, it's, it's, uh, the, the ruins, and then you can buy yeah. a stuff watch as well. I think. Yeah, no, no, no I, I, I'm, I'm just saying as an example. Like that's something I still don't know what to do. So it's like it doesn't matter how good you get at the game. It's just a continuous learning process. If you want to keep climbing, eventually you will reach like your peak though, or where you are plateauing it doesn't necessarily have to be your peak but it'll be where you plateau yeah i mean plateau is just means that you need to find a way to improve yourself to try to break through that plateau uh yeah. it's just part of the game really uh i followed an oceana challenge at jc looks kind of familiar to be honest rest of the pc Yogi. uh punishing like sterics and more give you lifesteal do you like i mean the, the the fact that you see in like almost every okay not almost every either but like Especially in Platinum Dawn, people like stacking items that have that as a bloodline. Uh, lifeline, yeah. Lifeline, that's it. It's a passive where it doesn't like work. You can't get certain items. If it says unique mm. and then a name on it, you can't get an item that has the same like term for it. Otherwise, it just doesn't stack. How does it work yeah. out which one it uses, though? Or are they the same? It uses. I think it uses. It, I don't actually know. I think it's whichever one procs first. So, you know, like how. Um, Sterex will proc after a certain amount of damage, and uh, more, the Metamortis will proc after if there's AP damage after you're at a certain amount of HP. So it dep I think it depends which one procs first. The game de determines which one proc'd first, and then activates that item. Okay. Um, and then puts both on cooldown. I mean, it's not too important, it was just an interesting thought, like, sort of game yeah. mechanics. Um, so... With regards to climbing in general, huh? like you, you've been playing multiple seasons of ranked, etc. Uh, what was the the biggest or what are the most notice or notable things that you've like discovered or worked out from like playing solo queue? Was there anything in particular, like for example, uh, teams being bad at every elo kind of thing? Like, was there any expectation that was like changed or learned through playing? Uh majority of the games that all right so there's like two things that i've learned right so the first one would be majority of the games that you play you can have an impact but eventually your impact runs out so say you are 10-0 on nocturne yeah. now you are ganking every lane putting every lane ahead but the moment you gank bot lane top lane and mid lane solo die so there's only a certain amount you can do with the players you're given in game one Game two, you can get completely different players who are better, but if you're still tilted from game one, you're not going to gank them as much, thinking, okay, these guys are trash, I'm not going to even bother with you. And you, you, you're basically now ruining a chance where these players are theoretically better, but you're not going to gank them. So I think tilting in solo queue is like the biggest problem that most players will have, is just straight up not having the mental capacity to climb. Uh, you just got to keep your mental up and then also uh, uh, not realizing that it's not how well you played in game one, it's how well you played and how consistently you played in game one through ten. Okay, yeah, just to elaborate on that, uh, that's a good point. Uh, a lot of people think that the higher ELO you get, it must, must mean the better you are, which is kind of correct to an extent, but a massive thing with regards to climbing is consistency. If you play yeah. like a, a challenger player every second game, but you play like a bronze like like every other game, you're not gonna climb. Or unless depending on which season you are, because I mean like last year's seasons has been insane with the LP gains at the start and whatnot, 40% win rate mm. challenges and stuff. But like, unless you can consistently play at a like a, a higher elo, at least two ranks higher than what you're like at, you're not gonna climb. So. You playing insanely well and then playing insanely poorly is not going to be good enough for you to climb, which is something that a lot of people don't realize, in my opinion, at least. Yeah, it's consistency. Climbing is consistency. It's not yeah. um, how well you play. It's not, not, not how well you play. It's not that you are smurfing or something like that. It's if you play consistently. Like, you can play consistently rubbish in your demote. <laughs> I've done that. Um, but yeah, if you look at people like Red RL, all these. Uh, streamers who do unranked to challenger right 
I mean, they get they are in these one v nine games majority of the time, um, especially like in low elo. And you can't really say, okay, well, I can one v nine my game too. No, these guys are challenger. They're playing against people who don't have a fucking clue what they're doing. True. So it's it, you can't take that. What you can take into consideration though is how every single game, regardless how the game's going, they keep playing the game at the same sort of level. And that's that's why they get like those crazy win rates and crazy they climb so quickly. Okay. I mean like for example we've got uh, people like Rats Rat IRL, if you guys don't know is like a uh ex booster I don't know if he's still boosting it probably is selling accounts, but like he's an insanely good Twitch player who would go on these uh, alt accounts and basically climb to like challenger without dropping mm. like any games. But yeah, like 97, 99% even, win rates. Even a player like that occasionally will drop a, a game in like low elo just because the team is being so like unfavorable. Like it, it, it just shows you that it doesn't matter who you are, there are going to be games where it's guaranteed loss. That's just like part of the game. It's how you treat it outside or once the game is done, whether you let it mentally affect you and get carried over into the next one or not. Yeah. Um, with regards to like boosting and stuff like that and smurfing, how, where do you where do you stand on the fence? Is smurfing something that should be allowed? Is it part of the game at this point, or would you change it so that no one can use the smurf? No, of course smurfing's allowed. Of course smurfing should be allowed. Okay, there's a big difference, right? Um, put it this way: in every single game you play, professional players have alt accounts, right? Now, theoretically, every single game has a rule saying you cannot buy an account. Period. Or you cannot buy an yeah, just basically you can't buy an account. Period. Now, these guys theoretically level their accounts to thirty, so, and then they climb them up to uh, whatever rank they are. And right. the thing is that they are playing now at their peak rank. Uh, professional players are playing at their peak rank, but this other account is still climbing. So obviously, you're gonna run into smurfs and stuff like that. It's gonna happen all the time, and that's professional players. Now, professional players are doing it, everyone's gonna do it. Not, Isn't that a uh, case just of like, uh, if your, your friend Jimmy jumps off the, the bridge, should you jump off the bridge as well, kind of thing? Like, no, it's, it's I feel like it's, I feel like people who complain people about smurfs, do. yeah. No, I feel like people who complain about smurfs don't realize that they themselves can smurf too. True. Like, even if you are a hard stuck bronze 4 player, right, you can still have another account to go and play on. If you're, if you're saying, I'm going to climb on, like, I've got six or seven accounts. I'm going to climb on X account, right? That means I'm going to have two accounts that I just don't give a shit. I'll play whatever the hell I want on those accounts. I'm not going to intentionally lose the game. Punish John. Um, <laughs> yeah, I'm not yeah. going to intentionally lose the game. I'm going to try my best to win, but I'm not going to care if I lose. Does that make sense? Yeah. Like, so that's that's the thing. But when I play on my main account, I'm hundred percent focusing. I'm trying to win. And when you're like that, it's very easy to tilt. And yeah. if now I've played my five games that I want to climb per day, I've lost three of them and only won one. I'll go into the Smurf account and let out my frustrations there. Just like play around, um, play whatever I want to. Just you know, let the mental reset type thing. Uh, Practice so, a certain champion. So it's the saying that both teams can have smurfs. True, but the thing is, if you're playing solo or duo, it, there's a high percentage chance of the enemy team having smurfs in your own. Um, so would you then advocate having everyone having a smurf accounts? Should everybody have multiple accounts? I feel like if you're playing, if you're playing the game to climb, you should have an an alt account. Yes, I feel like you cannot, you shouldn't be playing the game to lose intentionally. You shouldn't be playing the game to troll. You should be playing the game to win, but if it's um, if it's an account that you don't, you shouldn't necessarily always care if you win or lose. You should try and win, but you don't need to care if you lose. I don't know if that makes like any sense. Uh, I can yeah. I mean, like, another, like, for example, let's say you want to have an account you play a role that you don't normally play, but you want to play it in an environment that uh, is is proper practice. So if you, if you play a flex queue, a lot of players don't try. So playing yeah. on an alt account, for example, a role like AD carry, if you're like a jungle player, will let you play in an environment that encourages growth or practice because people take it more seriously because they want to climb on their main account. But if you play flex, there's going to be players who are trying first time like Olaf top lane and don't really care. 
So that's like a, no. a big point in my opinion on why Smurfs should be allowed or alt accounts rather. Yeah, exactly. Because like the thing is, if I'm playing a D1 Elo, um, and now the game's changed, my clay top lane's been nerfed to shit. Hmm. But um, well, they just reworked your one trick kind of thing. Yeah, they just reworked your one trick, or they did something here, they did something there. Your champion, the champion that you're climbing with now, all of a sudden is way weaker. Yes, you can still play that champion, and theoretically, you can still win the majority of your games, but there's now a new champion who is stronger, that you're like, okay, I, I want to try this champion. I've never played him before. I don't actually know the mechanics that well. Yeah, yeah. you can go and play him in customs or normals or whatever, but the, 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 the idea of ranked is it's competitive players playing against competitive players, yeah. and you're not going to be good at ranked unless you play ranked. So uh, you take that onto an alt account. More than not to saying play ARAM's best practice or commitment. Yes, no, because of the fact that uh, I'd say ARAM's a good warm up, perhaps. ARAM's yeah. you're going to play the same champion that you want to, like practice, as well as it's not five, so you don't really get to practice other mechanics like laning phase, like macro kind of stuff. So I feel like ARAM's is cool for warming up. If you're going to play some Sudoku, but you don't want to commit to like a full Smurf game, then perhaps an ARAM or something. Um, so good detail though. Yeah, or like a detail as well, true. Um, so you say smurfing is fine. What about selling and boosting? Like, are you on the same place with regards to people, uh, basically getting paid to play on accounts to carry them to higher ranks? You think that should okay. be allowed? Boosting, no. I don't think boosting should be allowed. I don't think. It's very difficult to tell the difference between a booster and a smurf, which is where a lot of the issue comes in, right? Boosting shouldn't be allowed. If if you can prove that this guy in Turkey is playing for is someone in China, is that paid and... boosting, or is that uh, if I'm on a if my my challenger friend is playing on a silver account with me, do the queue? I mean, if he's playing to, with you to have fun, it doesn't really matter. But how do you prove that? You know what I mean? Yeah, like you can't really prove line. that. It's a, it's a very gray line. Okay, so boosting I feel should be bannable, right? Selling accounts, I have I have this theory that Riot should sell level 30 accounts. Yeah. With I... however many champions or whatever. But Riot themselves should sell the accounts. You should because have the reason to, why you it's should such have a to thing. have a main account though that's already like level 30 or yeah, ranked. Yeah, no, obviously. You have to you have to prove that you played the game or done on, this on or a have level a main five. account. <laughs> I don't even know if it, you need to have, uh, yeah, maybe on a level. Because otherwise you're just switch, switching accounts and if you get banned or not, so it'll get reported. So you just, yeah, exactly. So it, it lists, like, you know how Riot's <laughs> now got the Riot account? Like, yeah. your Riot account connects your Legends of Runeterra and your, whatever, yeah. when they release their new games, how obviously. How does that get banned? Uh, it should, I don't even know. That's, Do you get that's banned in Runeterra as well, dude? I have no idea. I think it would only be in the one game, though. Um... Okay, I mean, I can't... Yeah, so, yeah, go for it, go for it. I was just going to say, so basically, they should have it that you could link those accounts together, and the opportunity, they should have an opportunity for you to buy accounts, because the whole reason of, the reason why selling accounts is so profitable is because it's illegal, and no yep. one, no one in their right mind wants to play level 1 to level 30. No. No one. Not even pros. That's why, like, a lot of league partners will get um, level 30 accounts. And I'm, pro players, when they go to a region, they all get yeah, level 30 accounts. Sort of like how they have in Korea where they have multiple accounts that are linked with one Korean ID kind of vibes. Uh, exactly. I think that, something like that should be like in every region, or like that's what I would do if I could. Because uh, that sort of holds you responsible if you do get banned as well. If you get banned on one account, it suspends all your accounts kind of vibes. Uh, yeah. So there's a reason not to pick Disco and Nunu and run it down. Yeah, um, exactly. The other thing, uh, Riot just, I mean, Jeremy just saying Riot must ban toxic people. What are your thoughts on the, the Riot's current, like, Riot system? Like, when, when do you think they went so wrong? Because I, I feel like, personally, it's becoming progressively worse and worse in regards it to, is. like, toxicity and flaming. Because people know they can Holy get away. Shit. Like, okay, so let's put it this way. Riot used to have the tribunal, right? And I'm not one of those people that say bring the tribunal back. Because, god, that was, the, that was, some, that was some meme -y stuff. Um... But the idea that you could be held culpable by your fellow players was pretty cool. I liked that idea. Yeah. So maybe they did something with like an honor level five only people that could look at it. And obviously they vote what they say 
is a uh, is proportionate to what riot says so if riot says no but everyone in the tribunal says yes it's still no to the ban you know what i mean yeah but uh the tribunal should should probably maybe still exist but the one thing that there's a huge problem with is you can say to someone you're a dog player you should not be playing this that the other right and leave it at that you can say that as in it's legally allowed or like for right games oh, no no so you, i'm saying you can't you can say it as in i can say it right now in a game yeah. right i can say it you want your punishment now no, no no what what i'm saying is i can say that to disco nunu yeah disco nunu doesn't type a single word but disco nunu has a hundred um cs He's got like four assists, five deaths, but he's been running it down. You can see like soft inting. Yeah. There's a difference between hard inting and soft inting, but he's soft, he's soft inting me. Now I'm trying to climb. This guy has now ruined that game of my five that I want to climb. So what happens is I then type something to him and I'm the one that gets banned for it. Whereas he gets no punishment at all. Yeah. So that's um... where my problem comes in with it is that the fact is you can say something tilted you can everyone will tilt in a game of league of legends whether you type it out or not is um irrelevant you can become tilted. it's the fact the fact of the matter is that if you type it out they should be they should be like i agree with like you know the ky word should be bannable right um you can, you can being racist <laughs> I, I, don't, I don't know they're gonna get bad <laughs> <laughs> no, no no tos and stuff for uh, twitch is uh, okay, thing. you know okay. a lot of say that on twitch um, um you, yeah. you you can you can you can you know ban someone for being racist or homophobic right, or right. whatever the case is something like that because that's that is not allowed it's in trigger, general trigger words it's gonna just instantly ban you yeah. as soon as you type it yeah yes exactly right so the trigger words i agree with but me typing to this guy dude why are you not ganking my lane and he goes and he does something bot side right and I say, I need help. I need help. I need help. Um, this guy's pushing. We can kill him. And I'm typing to this guy and nothing's happening. And my team's ignoring me. And now I'm getting more and more tilted and frustrated because the bot side of the map's losing, the mid side of the map's losing, but we can theoretically win top lane. But my jungle is just AFK farming. Then I type to him, okay, you know what? Fuck this. I'm done. I don't want to play this game anymore. I'm going to AFK. Um, you're just so dog shit at jungle. Blah, 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 blah. And I'm the one that gets banned, but they don't take into account the circumstances that happened. And that's one game so that you get told. That's something that's a lot harder to take into account, I guess. Like it's not easy exactly. to really to direct, like tell whether someone's intentionally feeding versus like they're just not having a good game because everyone has bad games. Exactly. Like I feel, I feel like everyone will have bad games and everyone will will tilt. If you're playing a game competitively online, people will tilt. Every single game has tilting people and toxic a toxic community. True. Yes, League of Legends is known as the toxic community, but every game has one. Same with Apex, same with uh, Overwatch, all that stuff. You know, so you kind of you kind of need to take that into account. Riot has pushed down on the toxic handle a lot, but have it's they, not necessarily helping. I mean, I feel okay, like theoretically, they've made very little effort with regards to trying to like uh, keep people in line. Okay, so my my theory is this. I've been banned multiple times. I've only been permed once, and I 100% deserve hey. the perma. <laughs> what did you do? I'm not gonna, uh, I can't without, say it. Without Twitch. saying, it's... like... Okay, so basically, I was... <coughs> what is... Not a, not a race of people, but a country of people that are known in League of Legends for what being rather bad. Uh, no, 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 it wasn't transfers. They're, they're in the EU. They're in the US. They're known for being relatively bad and eating baguettes. And I may have said <laughs> something along the lines of that country and a thing that happened in that country oh, okay, and that thing you, should have happened to them. Uh, so uh, I got straight up perma banned for that. And I didn't even argue it. I was no like, warning before that. Deserved. No, no. Uh, it was. I, I had no warning. There was no. That account wasn't. Um, in bad standing. Uh, in a bad standing. It was on a level four. They didn't get fourteen week whatever. I just got straight up perma banned. That's insane. They said this is, yeah, they said this is a gross um, misconduct. Blah 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 blah. Right. So, in my opinion, certain things are being done. The problem is Riot is struggling to tell the difference between tilt and toxic, and. The thing is they're banning people for tilt 
and not banning people for toxic and vice versa you know so it's uh, like i don't know i feel it's like they, a they, it's a lot easier to get banned for being toxic and not so much for for running a dawn because you could literally just type yeah. nothing and just run down 10 20 games in a row and think you're fine but how many times have you had a person running it down and you want to tell them something you know uh i mean generally i open a gg and check whether someone's got a match history that's 10 losses uh, and dodge it especially if they half of the disc and any but obviously it does slip through again there but how many times have you had a person on your account with a 70% win rate? Right? Not on your account, sorry. In yeah, your games, right? <laughs> when you when you're plat when you're plat four, right? Plat four, diamond four, they, these are around the elos that you'll mainly find smurfs, right? You get a gold two player in a full diamond four game, and this gold player's got a 73% win rate. He dies once because of a mistake. Cool, I'm running it. And he just starts running it. Or he yeah, just, or just he just pings you and he just starts running it. Yeah. yeah exactly like that sort of a thing now that tilts you and it, it it tilts everyone like you if you don't get tilted by that i congratulate you and i want to know what type of mental fortitude you have because like, that is definitely not me i mean uh, yeah that's like if you have a smurf in your team a lot of the times it feels like uh they they are either like i'm gonna hard carry this game solo or i'm gonna just leave the game because i expect my team to be better than they are so if, mm. a, if a smurf tilts they are just gonna go afk because they don't care about the account on the other hand if, if exactly. they don't they're gonna hard carry um see that's the difference that i have is when you're playing on an alt account you that's the difference between playing to uh not caring if you win or lose is still carrying on playing the game and yeah, trying to you're win. still trying because i mean it's your main account people definitely care more about their main than like uh, an alt that they're gonna throw away or buy another one uh yeah. just holding that thought vortex i appreciate that resub dude uh second month Pag uh, Charm. Blue Eyes saying, uh, X got permit for similar reasons. His French teammates kept putting surrender votes up. Okay, and he teed them. I, I can see where that's going already. Um, yeah. Uh, like, it was what well, Dragon's just mentioning how, uh, swearing in other languages. I'm pretty sure it picks up most languages, the, the bot. Uh, yeah, I think it picks up most languages, but, like, obviously, the bot in Turkey will pick up Turkish and English, but the bot in EU West won't necessarily pick up Turkish. That makes sense. Uh, as well as you can you get can. away with a lot of the essay slang, I guess. <laughs> yeah, you can, if you use slang, you're okay. And then if someone asks you what the slang is, you can just be like, uh, you know, it just means that you smell a bit funny or something. But, you know, it actually just means something completely different. Uh, so that's definitely a way. Another way of tilting and not typing is just typing the message and pressing escape. It doesn't feel as good, but it's something that I did when I was climbing. Because uh, tilting, tilt, tilt typing gets you, uh, loses you games. Uh, Dragon, I do see the messages to, to try to refer, or try to refrain from using like that, uh, because we can't get in trouble. Uh, but I do see what you're saying. Uh, back to watching interspecies reviews. Okay, enjoy Vortex. I appreciate popping in for that sub. Um, is there anything any else you want to elaborate on with regards to Smurfs, all accounts, that kind of stuff? Uh, I honestly think that people who complain about smurfs, yes, there is a reason you should complain about it, but it happens in every single elo. The only elo smurfs don't happen. No, wait, it even happens in challenger. You can be a 200 challenger player yeah, get smurfed going by, against like, worlds RCS kind of. Exactly, like it's gonna happen regardless, dude. You're gonna you're gonna get smurf. Smurfs are gonna happen. Yeah. It's just a part of playing a competitive game. If you don't want to play with smurfs, don't play. Go play a single player game. Uh, I mean, you know like, I mean? Even, like, even, I don't know about this season and previous season, but like, there's always been challenger players who have multiple accounts and challenger kind of thing, so even like as high as you get, you're gonna have smurfs. Exactly, um, yeah. Okay, so, slightly, uh, straying away from the topic of smurfs, looking at champion pool, like, with regards to someone who's trying to improve and climb inside the queue, uh, amount of lanes you should be playing, amount of champions, thoughts on one tricking, uh, any opinion? I mean, your thoughts on one tricking and mine probably align. Yeah. I feel like having one or two champions, having a small pool is definitely beneficial. The only time you would want to have a bigger pool is if you're content streaming or content creating. That's the only time you would play more than one champion in ranked. Or if you are playing for a team. Okay, so if you're playing competitive, that's the only real reason to have uh, a bigger um, champion. How many, how many champions yeah, do you have in competitive, in your opinion? In competitive uh in competitive i have about five champions that i will smurf with and about six or seven that i need to practice on 
which I will use an Alter Khan to practice on okay. because I'm not good enough at those champions to play them on my main. So that makes sense. Would you practice like one champ per account, or would you just play whatever you feel like playing on the smurf account that you're trying to practice? On the yeah, on the Alter Khan, I'll just play whichever <laughs> one of those champions that I need to practice is. Okay. Um, um, but yeah, one tricking one tricking in itself is not a bad thing because you can become so good at that champion that you can play it into any matchup. Whereas if you are playing Yorick, if you're a Yorick one trick, you can play it into any matchup, right? But now I've played like maybe three games against a Yorick in my entire season, and I'm playing a champion that I'm sort of comfortable on, but I don't understand the matchup as well as this guy does. I'll get completely outclassed. Okay. I mean, like, yeah, that's, for example, a lot of high elo players are one tricks. They're players who only play, like, one specific champion to get to that elix. You can get to your peak yeah. that way. Um, yeah, which exactly. is an issue at times, because if your champion gets banned, you don't want to play with an autofill, like, uh, one trick. Because it's basically almost a guaranteed loss to an extent, so they just play to go even. Um, it's the same yeah. with this autofill with brawls. Yep. Yeah, like, what I was going to say is, a lot of the times, one tricks will just dodge. But if you're playing a popular one trick, such as Riven, Katarina, Cassidon, uh, Leeson, you know, those champions will get banned. And also if your one trick gets a buff or something like that, you know, it, it, it's obviously obvious that you're not going to easily get your champion. So I wouldn't say necessarily play the best or the strongest one. If you're going to one trick a champ, make it your champ. And you know, if you that's why I say two tricking is better because the likelihood of both your champions getting banned is pretty low. Okay. Um so how do you how do you okay, so I don't know if you've ever one tricked it before, but how do you what's the standard process of going about finding the champion that you want to be playing? I mean, cuz a lot of people have the issue of they get really really bored if they play the same champion for like 20 games straight. Like do you have any method for finding the champ that you don't get bored of as well as how do you not make it as boring all right so i didn't I, i've played a lot of champions one trick right if that makes sense i played 30 games of ergots where i one tricked them i only played ergot i played 30 games of silas where i only played silas then i would maybe go back to ergot or i'd go to a new champion this that the other so when i one tricked i one trick for a while and the reason why I would stop one tracking was either because I was getting tilted at that at the champion, the matchups weren't that great, or you know when you're one tracking, you're one tracking to climb. So when I was playing um, Urgot, that was mainly top lane. I noticed a huge increase in champions that were bad matchups for Urgot. So like. Uh, say it was a Darius or something. I don't even know what the bad matches for Urgot were back then, but you know, Darius or something. So then I would change up my champion pool. Um, but one way you can prevent it is the same way as before. You play five games a day of that champion. Now that champion, your, that, your goal if you're one tricking on that champion is to climb, right? Yeah. So you play those five games with that champion. You go to an alt account, you play flex, you play whatever to chill out. And you can play whatever you want so, yeah, so it, you treat it as like a job almost like that that's your job that's what you're doing and then when that's done you can go do whatever you want as soon as you get bored just start playing i guess like that's like just take a break stop for the day uh you can see yeah. that being a uh, good advice um okay so like how often would you change your your one check or your champion like uh if you were playing let's say you were an ergot main how, how long do you think you'd play that main for before potentially switching to a different one trick? I could play it for a long term. Like for me, the thing is for me, League of Legends, almost every game is different, right? Right. Even if you're one tricking a champion, the game, the game itself will always be different because you've got different people in the game, different matchups, different champions. Well, not always, but like majority of the time you'll have between 30 to 40 champions in five games that will be different. So the matchup and the experience will always be different, but you definitely have between like 50 people um, that are different. Um, so yeah, yeah, you don't get, you don't. I didn't get bored, but um, the reasons why I would change were more so matchup dependent. I wasn't doing as well in the champion as I once did, was because you know you could play you could play a champion in bronze that's just incredibly strong in bronze, like Master Yi. Master Yi is incredibly strong in bronze. You just spam that champion. 
but the moment you get to gold or like another one's twitch jungle i was really good at twitch jungle in silver to low plat that i was really good people at twitch are very like uh well they, yeah. they don't really know that level two cheese is gonna happen kind of thing or how to punish yeah. it and you can get you can get you can get ahead of people's misplays very easily that's yeah. like the idea of twitch is getting ahead on people's misplays but i'm nowhere near as good as red rl or any other twitch one trick out there or twitch red player out there that's in high level <laughs> You know exactly yeah so I, I can't kite properly so eventually i reach a point where i can't climb on that champion anymore so i have to change it up so it just that that's that's for me why i would change it up is that i either can't do it how would you find the new champion was it like from being research and finding a champion that's a high win rate or would you yeah. just go by feel like Looking... something that beat you in solo queue um so one thing is i would definitely look at champions that are similar to what i was playing like something similar to Twitch's Eve, similar to Eve's Kha'Zix, Rengar, like assassin assassin type stealth jungles, which is with what led me to Nocturne eventually, because Nocturne's a really good fighter, plus he's got the stealth aspect with his ulti and um, yep. insane fighting and dueling potential. So that's eventually what led me to Nocturne. So it's just, as you said, it's like, it's doing research on the champions, um, seeing what they what they get played as seeing where they are in, in terms of like leaderboards and stuff nocturne was pretty high it, it was the highest rated jungler out of those five that i just mentioned so i went for that uh champion and yeah. i played him like one or two games on an alt account so i was like you know what this actually feels really good so just and then I just it, like, works, like, yeah. yeah if the champion doesn't work for you it doesn't matter if it's the most op champion in the world if you cannot play that champion you're screwed yeah so where where do you stand on mechanics in terms of like a champion to find for like your your main slash one chicken uh do you like i mean obviously it takes you have to take into account of ranked kind of thing a lot of people say don't play highly mechanical champs don't play your yasuo etc if you're in bronze but uh mm -hmm. is that is that the right mentality in your opinion or do you feel like you're gonna get better the quicker if you play like uh something like a ribbon that requires you to learn the mechanics and like the micro elements that like league has um so like the thing is if you're playing a mechanical champion right the idea is more mechanics equals more fun that's like basically the idea i have when it comes to mechanical champions is that, like, old is that for everybody or is that just something that you enjoy personally uh, for for me personally it's 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 something that so in my experience right more mechanics equals more fun if you think about old warwick right you would click r on someone right, you wouldn't you, you would just hover your mouse on them and click r yep and people would climb insane elo with this champion but then you had someone like these lee sin one tricks hmm. which which they would have more fun on it right so i feel like yes there there is there is probably you probably will climb easier on champions that are simple like the old warwick um you know something like that annie mid lane whatever yeah but if you're not gonna have fun on the champion I would definitely recommend like what i said with the alt account but i definitely feel like if i'm not having fun on the champion i'm not going to pay as much attention i'm not going to try as hard as i should be so it has to it has to even out in terms of like it has to be something that i can click with and that the mechanics me uh, mesh for me okay no fair enough i mean like uh it comes kind of ties back into the fact of are you playing for fun versus are you playing for like like to climb Elo. Yeah. yeah exactly if you're trying to climb you'll play whatever the, you'll play whatever and you'll have fun when you're not trying to climb on that account you know you'll play flex queue like yogi was saying or whatever yeah and just play whatever you want there so dark saying play something unmechanical like janna true big tree <laughs> um so just referring back to that uh old warwick uh, i remember reading a thread on, on reddit it was a dude who used to he was like an any challenger player who would just play yep. pokemon on like his phone or something while he plays warwick or uh, in, the, in the jungle because it was so brain yep. dead that like you wouldn't even pay attention to half the time like to the game and just climb so yeah like i mean i mean maybe that's a good approach for like streaming for example trying to find a chapter that doesn't require like a lot of focus because then you can focus on chat more because that was something we discussed a little bit earlier ago but how it like distracts you or like you need you you have to trade off certain things like for example looking at the money map as often so you can look at the chat instead yeah so finding something Pain. that requires you to, to focus less yeah, you get like you get like you're you're talk, looking at your chat and you accidentally get ganked and didn't see it or you're basing yeah, and the like guy you would have, you would have seen you. it otherwise had you not been streaming kind of thing. Um, yeah. 
So, uh, we've covered toxicity. Oh, okay. So, with regards to toxicity, uh, firstly, I mean, you said you got permitted before for saying certain things. Uh, are you a genuinely a toxic person outside of League, or was it just that League manages to bring it out, like, or trigger you? I feel like if you are in a bad mental state, playing a game in which toxicity exists, or playing online games, it will you will be toxic, right? True. It's it's guaranteed. Like I mean, I've often said, and I don't mind discussing it, is I have depression. I've been depressed for three years. Uh, due to that, I have had emotional issues and stuff like that. You know, I've had bad days and stuff. Yeah. So it's that like, was yeah, another aspect. Weird. I. Yeah, I had, to, I had to take that into aspect uh, that aspect into consideration when I was trying to climb as well. If I was having a bad day, I was not going to climb. It's just yeah, that something I wouldn't even bother playing league. Yeah. So, due to that, um, people being toxic to me can sometimes ref I can sometimes return toxicity. If I'm having a bad day, I might be more toxic than on a normal day. But I don't necessarily think I am a toxic person. I okay. think I try to be a nice person and I kind of, if I'm in a good mood, I'll joke around it with a guy who's just tilting and telling me, you know, KYS, this, that, the other. I'll, I'll joke around with that guy. But um, if if uh, I'm in a bad place, then probably I would be more tilted with it and it would affect me worse. But I mean, in my opinion, if someone's typing shit to you, right? Someone's typing all these negative things to you, just mute it. Like what's his <laughs> medium forehead? <laughs> like it's so insane to me that people are like, "Oh, these guys are so toxic in League of Legends, yada yada yada," and it's like, "But why not just mute him? Yeah. What, what difference does it make? Especially if it's an enemy player, You're an choosing enemy team. to engage with them, I guess. Like even like yeah. chat in general, all it does is a distraction. It's like instead of focusing on like the wave, focusing on the mini map, you're looking at chat and reading the conversation that the enemy top lane is having with your jungler. Um, exactly. I mean, that's something that I recently started doing was uh, literally I've got an uh, uh, enemy chat disabled. In the in the mm. past, I would argue that oh no, but I need to like some like some of the timers, or I need to be able to tell my team to communicate. But uh, um, you can do it all with pings now. Yeah, basically you can do it all with pings, and I honestly think the trade off is worth more not to see your chat or like if you make a mistake and you know your team's gonna flame you for making that mistake you mentally like it, it's mentally taxing even if they don't flame you because you're sort of watching for them to flame you but after you get used to not having chat enabled like you suddenly you like you treat them more as bots i guess where you don't really actually care of their thoughts because you know you made the mistake and you know that you know to improve it so you're not trying to impress other players or worry about them like uh, the consequences of not like playing optimally so yeah in, in my opinion i like i i definitely say just disable all chat even as a new player no yeah. so like in my opinion nothing nothing in chat can be um not expressed with pings yeah uh so i would play uh, it, most of the time i don't care enough about chat right if i'm in a bad mood i just mute all full i don't uh, even have twitch, pings. twitch chat or leak chat you cover <laughs> <laughs> both both and yes, I am reading the chat. So just, yeah. uh, the the so in my the thing is with jungle, and I have to ask questions because this guy could ping flash, um, but I'm not too sure if it means his the flash is coming well, up, the flash is down. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. So that's the reason I would keep it up as saying, does he have? And against certain champions, it's important to know. Okay, does he have double? <laughs> right. You know. Um, or unless you see him using the ability. I mean, honestly, I, I, I could argue with you on that point a little bit. Like, uh, I read this, th okay, I don't know if I 100% agree with this, but I read a, like, Korean challenger red thread a while back, like a year or two ago, saying how he plays the game with all chat disabled, all ping is disabled, because you shouldn't be dependent on other players to communicate with you with regards to rotations and stuff like that. You should be able to watch the map and train yourself to the point where you are self-reliant. Like, because expecting, like, if, if you play expecting to get information and like uh, stuff like that from your allies, you, you're dependent on other players and you should be playing with the mentality that everything that happens is your fault and that you could have done it differently to like to, to make yourself like win. Okay. So what, what, sorry, what rank was this guy? Oh, uh, some Korean challenger, high either player. Korean uh, challenger, ages okay. Ages ago. But, yeah. Okay, carry on, sorry. But I mean, that's, that's about it. Like, I mean, 
I, I kind of agree with him, to, with him to an extent, but I've never gotten to that extreme to mute pings, like everyone's pings. I mean, that could be quite a cool experiment actually to try. Um, uh, I've done it. I mean, I mute when I'm tilted. I mute for yeah, all. But I mean, just straight from the um, start, like straight up, ping, nah. or, like all pings are disabled. So, like, in my opinion, that is someone who is inherently, uh, inherently good at the video game or at this video game. But maybe that that's the factor advice. that's helped them get to that point, though. Uh, I mean, like, there's a lot of factors that would get into challenges, no one thing. I, I refuse no, sure, to believe sure, that. Sure, 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 sure. That, that, it, it could tie into the mentality that get, he has. That yeah. Part. Like, you know, 10 tips to get to challenger. Like, no one of those tips is going to get you to challenger. It's all of them together. It's using your own um, thing. So I kind of agree with what he said that, you know, like, you've got to be more dependent on yourself. But I mean, I, I am not watching mid lane, top lane. I don't know what happened five seconds ago in mid lane. That Zed could have used his W. True, or he but I mean, have, have, you, watched, use uh, have sure. you watched LS the Last Shadow stream much? You, 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 exactly. You know, like that, that I can understand is how they play the game. But I can't play the game like that. I'm can't not good enough to play want the game. To, though. Like it's a lot. I don't have the, yeah. I don't have the finger. I don't have the mechanics. finger speed or the mechanics to do that. Yeah. Okay. I know. I know where. I know where I am. Right. I, I've. I've decided I know where I am in my League of Legends career, quotation marks, right? So do you not feel I like you've climb. mentally handicapped yourself to success? No, I can climb. I can climb, for sure. I, I am not the slow elo, you know? I can easily climb. But do I care to? That's that's the big point. Okay, no, matter, okay fair enough, fair enough. I mean, uh, as if you were looking to try hard, though, like... Oh, yeah, then I would the definitely small... have to change... Oh, I'd have to change my opinions. Um, I would have to try and increase my finger speed and mechanics and stuff like that. And that would require me playing like those certain games, like, you know, like not Jump King, but the other one, Bosu or something like that, that Yasuo often plays on his stream, you know, where it's all relying on your speed and stuff like yeah. that. Um, like they, that could definitely work, but I, up to a point due to like my own conditions and stuff like that, I would not be able to reach yeah, the highest level. taking yourself out of the race kind of thing. Just... Yeah. Uh, I mean, like, okay, so back when I was actually actively tryharding, I used to do, like, Excel docs with, like, notes, for example, each game, three points that I did well, three points that I did poorly that I could work on. End of the week, you go mm. and find the common trends in your weak points, and then identify which is your, like, the mistake you make it the most, ha uh, and then work on that actively. As well as practicing mechanics and practice tool, like, uh, Rakan combos over and over and over again, to the point where it becomes muscle memory, which is massive, honestly, and... When I actively did stuff like that to try and improve, as well as timers, everything I could like try find online to actually make myself better, I I definitely climbed. I, I like got. I think it was the first time I got to quote unquote high elo. I think it was with Recon. I hit like diamond two back in like I don't know. I'm not sure which season it was to be honest. Um, but like 100 agree it's, with you. It's it's. Uh, I want to say it's not fun, but it's a lot of work to actively try and get better at the game instead of just grinding out matches, grinding out a thousand yeah, games. You can grind out a thousand games and not improve yeah. significantly. If you want to improve your gameplay, it's going to take work. Like, if you're playing, you've got to decide, are you playing League of Legends for fun or to climb? I think, I After think, a, like, yeah. when, I was, when I was trying to climb, I was not necessarily always having fun. A lot of the times it was mentally taxing. I would go to bed, go to sleep, you know, I would be tired um, after the, like the five games that I played that day, I'd be a bit tired or whatever. You know what I mean? It was, it was like work. It's like, cause you're putting your full concentration into it. You're doing your utmost to improve, to try yeah. and climb. Um, but eventually like when I reached D2, I plateaued. I, I, I was just almost burnt out, but not necessarily burnt out. I was just too tired or too, it was too close to the new season to bother trying to grind anymore. Um, so it's it's like you said, you can play a thousand games and not improve enough. Like you actually have to make the effort, do the practice tool stuff, yeah. do the research, figure out your stuff. Like, like I didn't use the Excel spreadsheet, but like going through your own videos where you made the mistake, sometimes I would use a sticky note and just make a little point there. Okay, I fucked up here. It sort of ties back into like, if you want to improve, you need to be doing like, uh, there's a, a study almost where it should be 50% research, 50% gameplay, meaning that as much time you spend actually playing on the Summoner's Rift League of Legends, 
you should be on YouTube videos watching Korean high elo challenger players versus like on Reddit researching like the subreddits of the champion that you're playing kind of thing. Because in order to improve, you can't just like, practice mechanics. All you're doing in that is like, uh, I guess the the more you play without adding new mechanics or new discovery and research, the the less effective it becomes. So yeah, if you actively want to improve versus saying that you want to improve, like. That's, a, that's another argument is that there's a massive difference between saying you want to be the best one to improve versus actually actively like trying to improve. Mm. Um, like especially like in SA for example, there's a lot of people who say that they want to like get good or get a high elo, but what are they actually doing to get them to that point? Yeah, you can only blame ping so much. In my yeah, opinion. I mean, the ping yeah, okay. excuse. Where, where, where are you standing on that? Yeah. Excluding on what's happening currently, right? Back when I had uh, two twenty ping constants, right? Now that's that's high ping. Yeah. Obviously, in any terms of EUS, that's high ping. But we can play on it in South Africa. Um, I feel that the only thing you're missing slightly is sidestep and flashy plays. Now, if you're wanting to improve and you're wanting to climb, and you are silver one in South Africa and you're wanting to climb. Don't look at a champion like Leeson or Irelia or Gangplank where mechanics matter that much. Look at a champion like Gragas, um, Graves, Jarvan, where it doesn't necessarily matter that, that much on what your ping is. If you've got stable ping, you can play those champions really well. Like Gragas, the E flash you can do on South African ping. Yeah, easy. Uh, 100%, you know? Um, it, you would just have to go into practice tool, like you said, and actually practice doing it if if um, you, if you knew the correct not mentality the correct uh practice regime i guess as well as like if you had the right understanding and uh attitude towards the game you could probably go from silver to diamond in one season yeah 100 percent. as long as you kept the thing is you could never uh, not never you could you could almost never stop trying to learn. You would have to yeah. consistently try to improve. Like, there's no ways you'll go from silver to diamond in 100 games unless all of a sudden you're a god at the game, right? Because the mechanics, the, the level of play will all be different. You'll have to get, it's like you said, 50% research. Okay, so plat players like to do this. And you experience it and you're like, wait, but they do this as well and they do this and they do this. And, you know, it's not necessarily only the champions. You're learning the, the mechanics in that elo as well. Like, if you take bronze people, bronze people never rotate. That's why you get so many um, junglers in bronze elo that just get so insane scores because they just go and bully the enemy jungle. You know? Yeah. Um, it, it, it's, it's, it's stuff like that that you've, you've got to just keep learning. And once you keep learning, you will climb. So, slightly different topic, but uh, what, let's say new day, you're ready to start playing Soda Key, blah, blah, blah. What is your go to warm up regime? How do you go from just woken up or just finished with whatever you had to do no i want to go play solo queue and try and gain lp um you could i was really bad at that uh kind of i think i think some days i would play flex queue but i didn't really have a regime i would just jump into it which wasn't the smartest thing in my opinion what you should do is warm up your brain a little uh, especially if you've just woken up which would be my case most of the time warm up your brain a little play a game watch uh not watch something you know do something active or play, engaging play a game you as have... in like uh something that's not a league uh no you can play like an aram or something something that engages your brain and makes you think a little bit because you're going from groggy tired mental yeah, state into full fight. active yeah you gotta you gotta get rid of that so do do whatever it is that that you can engage yourself with um so playing a flex i would play a flex queue game like okay. just play it, lose, whatever, I don't care, go into the ranked game. Um, or if it was a really hard flex queue game, I'd play another one just to be like, okay, was that because I'm out of my mind or was that because I'm just uh, still not 100% awake yet? And then I'd play another flex queue game and then I'd play my five games after that. But I didn't do that all the time, but definitely that's what you should look at is engaging your brain, waking up and then going into it. You know, like sometimes your hands are cold and you hear a lot of pro players talk about it or high elo players saying, like rubbing their hands together, okay, my hands are cold, you know? Yeah. I mean, you um, can get those small lamps you. that you put for your hand. <laughs> you yeah, to, yeah, like there's, there's people there's people that do that stuff, but like to me, that wasn't necessarily an issue. Um, but 
that that's the thing there's like a lot of different things that you can do to warm up your body and stuff like that you know wake yourself up if you want to wait if you want to do something to engage your brain as well you can go and do some exercises go for a walk around your block or whatever you okay. know do something like that that's what i would do also is actually go for a walk once i woke up had my breakfast drank my coffee i'd go for a walk around come back home sit down in front of the computer i'm now feeling a bit good you know the blood's flowing whatever and then i play the games yeah, something I heard was quite good that I've tried to do myself is once you wake up, just have a glass of water just immediately, uh, just to get everything like uh, washed through, I guess. Yeah, waking up. Mm. <coughs> right. Um. So, music. Do you do you actively listen to music while you play? Is it something that is there anything particularly you listen to when you try hard kind of thing? Do you not listen to music? <laughs> I used to listen to uh, Taylor Swift and of Monsters of Men when I was try harding in goals. Interesting. How do you how do you manage to start that? <laughs> I don't know. I just started listening to the music and I won a game and I was like, huh. Oh. So I kept listening yeah. to the music so and won like good luck. two more. And I was, I was just, uh, you know, it wasn't even good luck because I would lose some games as well. But it was just something that it was like a habit forming almost. Uh, yeah. So one thing that I did. Uh, is I don't think it's good to blast music. Okay. Um, so like playing a lot of heavy dubstep, whatever you can do that. I would listen. I will listen to almost any kind of music now or back then when I was trying to climb, but I would have it on a lower volume to pings. Like I don't care about in-game sound, right? Like Cyan Alti so loud you can hear over one percent. Unless you so my, punish um, child and you don't listen to audio while you play. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Punish child is another special topic. There's no helping him. Um, <laughs> so then, <clears throat> you know, like there's stuff that you can do like that. Um, but blasting the music, you want to be able to hear pings. You want to be able to hear certain ultimate abilities. Darkness being one of them. But I mean, you see it. Cled's Alti being another. Cyan's Alti being another. Um, so if you have your music blasting, you don't necessarily listen to that, and that can cost you um, at least a flash or uh, a death. <clears throat> okay, oh, fair enough. I mean, what's it? Uh, I know certain people like uh, Red Raven has this go-to climb song, which is some like heavy trance slash like that kind of vibes. What's up, Slutty Monkey? Mm. Dude? Welcome back. Uh, Someone's just saying Rat IRL. True, true. If you guys uh, just listen to a lot of Rat I listen to a lot of Red IRL, but I mean, it's not necessarily climbing music for me. It's just yeah, it's music diff, diff, in the diff, background. Diff. Um, yeah. If you guys just joining us now, we're just discussing general League of Legends, like good practices, climbing, uh, stuff like that. You're more than welcome to drop questions in chat. Uh, we're talking to Jungle Moron X Diamond player slash streamer. Yep, that's him on the screen. <laughs> um, so we just discussed whether music is a good or bad idea for uh, solo key for tryharding stuff like that, improving. I mean, that can be some of the stuff, or well, some of the things that we're discussing can be crossed over to other games as well, not necessarily just League, just practices in general. Um, uh, honestly, I actually yeah. remember in sorry, I remember in high school. I, I just seeing as we we're on music. Um, my we were talking about listening to music while studying, and it was only I just found out his name now. It's Johann Sebastian Bach was back then through like experiments the only music that helps actually increase your <coughs> concentration. Okay. So that's that's, that's um, something that I thought was also interesting is like certain music has no, the ability definitely. to increase your concentration and other music has the ability to take it away. I mean, what's it? I, I read a, a study or like a, a research uh, paper about how what's it? Eminem is one of the best music to listen to while you gym. Um, yeah, because of the beat. Yeah, as yeah, the, I guess the blood flowing and like stuff. Uh, Slutty says, in his opinion, obviously it depends on the person to person, but music is the best thing for games. It keeps you calm. It keeps your mind clear. That's interesting. Um, I mean, uh, if you guys have been on the stream at some stage, I do occasionally listen to like an audio track where it's like just every minute it says like map or if every like. 30 seconds or something it says a certain word that triggers your thoughts process to like sort of take away the uh so, so ge like generally for example you would have an automated thought or like subconsciously think about having to look at the mini map for example with league um instead of having that you have a repeating mechanic something like audio triggering you to, to look at the map instead 
That way your subconscious doesn't have to concentrate on that anymore. It can now concentrate on something else instead. Which is quite nice in my opinion instead of music. Otherwise you could sort of associate like a, a beat. So every time it makes a certain sound in a song to that thought. Which could do the mm. same like same job to an extent. Uh, I mean in that case if you're doing something actively like that. It could help a lot with the... With, uh, like trying to try harding, I guess. No, definitely. I, I didn't actually even consider that before. But I mean, it's the same thing with like what you said there with the gym stuff. It's the same thing like when you're playing rugby. You can list, some people will listen to classical music and get hyped up, and then yeah. other people will listen to all about your hype song. the heaviest death death metal and get hyped up for their game. You know, it's just it's dependent on the person. Some people like I think Bjorkson doesn't play with any music on his stream or he used to not play with any music on his stream because he would just be concentrating and he can't play with music in the background fair enough i mean like that's like some people study better to those like youtube live channels with study music kind of thing um yeah. like slotty says that he plays apex with music i i do too a lot of people say how do you play apex with music but i don't take the game that seriously that i feel like i need to as well as i i don't know if i don't enjoy it as much if it's not music or if i'm just used to it at this point from streaming uh, that's just constantly yeah. music playing whenever I do anything. Turn the PC on, the first thing I do is load up YouTube music. Exactly, so, so, look, I can't do anything, I can't play on my computer or play a game yeah. without something in the background. If it's a stream, it doesn't even need to be music for me, it could be a stream, it can be watching a series or something, or just hearing something in the background is what, otherwise I just can't focus 100%. Um, JW, why did I know that that was the uses on National Anthem without even, like, requesting it? <laughs> like, I just, as soon as JW mentions anything with the YouTube, like, it's always the freaking Anthem. But, uh, what's up, Conan? How the, how the, uh, studies going? Comrade! I came from CSGO, so listening to the game is very important, so I can never listen to something without auto -parting. Okay. Yeah. It depends on your, your, like, uh, like you said, it depends person to person. Um, have you spent money on League? Uh, I mean, being the free-to-play game, uh, how how frequently do you find yourself spending like IRL currency on on the game? Okay, so if I look at my skins now, now they didn't have. When did they bring in Hexic Chest? It was twenty eighteen, right? Uh, might have been before that. I'm not sure to be honest. Twenty seventeen, yeah, maybe twenty twenty sixteen. Okay, yeah, I think twenty sixteen. We can safely say they didn't have Hexic Chests. Yeah, so before then I had bought skins since 20, 2012 I was my first year playing league I bought a Kali and a Teemo skin right two Akali skins and a Teemo skin was it uh From there, was it the Ninja Kali? Uh, uh, it was Kali? Blood Moon and oh, yeah. no no it was Blood Moon and Infernal um from there i spent quite a bit of money on the game going up spent more money on the game so yes i've definitely spent money on the game i think with the hex deck boxes it's definitely like since the release of hex deck boxes i haven't spent money on the game um or at least not money I i've spent money to transfer accounts to different regions uh, Wait, why did you why do you transfer regions uh for streaming content you know, I, tr I transferred <laughs> to Turkey to try out what Turkey would, and? how Turkey was. Oh, uh, let's just say there's an account that's banned in Turkey. Oh, yeah. Nice. But like, thoughts on the quality of the server compared to uh, US? Honestly, I think once you get to the highest level in solo, ah, it's, Turkey was trash. Put it that way. <laughs> like the thing is that the matchmaking's trash. There's not enough not players. Enough players. Fair enough. It's, it's the same thing that Halzon's having the problem yeah, with Japan, Japan Russia, not enough players. Or similar. With regards to there's just, there's, yeah, there's just not enough players for, like in EU West, NA, and Korea, I think those are the three biggest servers, right? Uh, I think so. China, or Korea. China might be another one. Yeah, like, like that's the thing, those, those are huge servers. Um, and still the Japanese team won Waltz. So it just goes to show you that it's not necessarily um, the quality of players, it's the depth and the it's ability also the to environment in which, teams. like, uh, if yeah. you have an, an ecosystem that, like, encourages gaming slash, like, the culture. I mean, look at, like, Korea, and I'm not sure where else they have, like, see, let's see, let's go. They have, like, esports on the TV, like, the standard channels kind of thing. So, like, 
it's quite well worked into their their environment because they're so far ahead compared to somewhere like for example South Africa who's like 10 years behind with everything that's like tech related mm. um I mean like you look at the Turkish uh, server you look at the Japanese server they have issues with player base which is the same argument in that why we don't want like I actively do not want an African server because yeah, the quality is going to be so bad like the thing is if you think about it now right um people who keep arguing about a south african server okay there is arguably twenty thousand people in africa playing league of legends i would say that I that's, say that's that a much, dude. Uh, uh, like at max right there's 50 there's twenty thousand people playing in africa i guess in that africa, includes whole Egypt africa and, probably yeah uh... yeah the whole of africa i would say so eus current player base Oh my god, if I could spell. Vortex saving up gives the time here. Hey, they did. 115 million players play League of Legends in 2019. So that's all together. Okay, let's say there's about a couple of million playing <laughs> League of Legends in the US. Yeah. Right? How the hell do people expect to play games on in South Africa? You're going to play against the same people consistently at every elo there's going to be the majority of the server is going to be bronze it's going to be the same thing that happens to turkey and oceanic where you have challenger players playing with gold players in the games um, because the re there's just yeah. not enough player base I, I, I agree i mean uh honestly i feel like if we put a server at the top of africa like egypt kind of vibes we'll probably pull in a lot of like europe and other locations that will play to the server as well just to get challenging kind yeah. of things so it wouldn't be just Africa per se, but even so, I feel like the quality of the server is going to be so bad that I'd rather just play on the US where it's like better practice, better competition, and there's actually something like something tied to being quote unquote high elo in a region like that. Yeah, because the, the entire point of being high elo is to brag about it. Almost True. always. <laughs> like, True. You play, you play a game, you play a game competitively for like two reasons: to brag about being high elo or to get pro at it. Yeah, if you're and then in the, the third, if you're in the country, for like, for like yeah, competitive. So, yeah. yeah, if you're in like Sorry, Korea or something, you can uh, use it as status, I guess. Yeah, you know, like it's it's a whole it's a whole, and that's with most competitive games. There are people who play games for fun. They play ranked for fun. They don't really care about fine. their account. Which is yes, exactly. It is perfectly yeah. fine to play ranked for fun. You, but the you know, thing ask is yourself: that, Do you wanna? Do you actually want to play for fun, or do you wanna try hard? Like, there should be uh You should be aware at this point. Yeah, like if you've played the game for a couple of years, you should know what your end goal is. Now, I played League for six, seven years, and I know at this point that I will not be going pro. You know, I figured that out a long time ago. Yeah. Um, I was trying to stream high elo. Uh, I was trying to get high elo for stream. I realized that's not going to be a thing because one, I only managed to win a few D3 games on stream, D2 games on stream. You know, I didn't even stream the majority of the games that I played when I was trying to climb. Um, so that's not a possible aspect for me because I'm not good enough at the game or multitasking to do both at the same time. So now I've decided that I will be playing League of Legends primarily for fun. If I climb, I climb. If I don't climb, I don't climb. You know what I mean? But like the thing is, I still have in me the, um, the one, knowledge of how yeah. to do it. So then what are you so, doing differently now that you're not necessarily trying your hardest? Like what? Uh... Uh, I play a lot of TFT. I'm doing like a lot of research on TFT, playing that, trying to get better at that because I've always thought of myself as not mechanically Just skilled, good. but I've got a big brain, big fire. Big head, brain. Um, what about like uh, Runeto? Have you played much Runeto? Yeah, uh, basically I've... I've been spamming Runeterra, but instead of trying to grind rank, I've been doing expeditions and trying to unlock most of the cards because I feel like once... It's the same thing as like Hearthstone theoretically, right? Once you have all the cards, you can play around with them and see what works best for you. But currently, the only deck I have is a Yasuo deck. And aside from the free-to-play uh, decks, yeah, which I mean, you've proven yourself on stream <laughs> can get you like silver or something. At least something, for Nox, yeah. the game's needed. <laughs> you know so it's like it's like it doesn't it, it's it's i'm trying to have uh, those those two games i could try and grind in like i used to play hearthstone i used to be legend in hearthstone <coughs> right but then i fell off um i didn't play as much and then 
all the new cards came out all of my yeah, my two one. decks followed yeah followed a meta so you know the thing is like playing something like legends of runeterra or tft now where it's still kind of new and still basically able to grow into it and not fall behind would be better for me i mean tft is not pay to win at all but legends of runeterra will be any card game becomes pay to win that's interesting i mean so in riot games of west felt is a group that doesn't uh doesn't make their games pay to win, but they have ways of monetizing it, like for example skins and card backs and stuff like that. That would uh, cosmetics, like so. I mean, I'd be very surprised if the Rune Terror game went pay to win. I feel like the thing is, you can buy. Um, I don't know if you can actually buy cards necessarily. Oh wait, you can. I'm pretty sure. I think you, you can buy, buy wild cards. Aye. I'm not sure. So the honest. wild cards, yeah. yeah, the wild cards, you can probably buy those. But you can buy currency in Legend of Ruterra, which does help you. Um, I mean, even if you're just doing expeditions, if you buy enough currency, you can just continuously run expeditions and get all the cards that way too. Versus someone like me who doesn't put any money into the game and only uses the token you get whenever it happens. Okay. But yeah, it's, it's, it's basically, it's basically, if you want to climb it, it will get better at a game. You know, you've got to you've got to eventually come to the conclusion. Okay, this is as far as I can go realistically, while still maintaining to have fun, not wanting to climb, or you know, not not with the idea to climb. Okay. Uh, cool Dragon says Olaf Light is really good. Is that TFT? I don't know what Olaf yeah, Light is. Yeah, that's uh, that's that's TFT based. <laughs> okay. Uh, I'll 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 I will take that into consideration. Uh... Finally. <laughs> I mean, like, okay, Cool Dragon saying how you can play for fun as well as to to climb or to to try hard. I mean, I I, I don't one hundred percent agree with that. I feel like if you're gonna be playing for fun as well as trying to climb, it's not gonna be as effective. And in that case, like, it's not playing optimally. I feel personally like you should play either for fun or to climb. I mean, you can have fun climbing or you can climb to have fun, but you can't yeah. try hard. Uh, if you're playing what you feel like playing just because it's it's fun to you kind of thing but obviously if you if yeah. you yeah like like what you said there like the thing is you can you if you're playing for fun or you're saying you can do both it's not necessarily realistic because when you're trying to climb you're putting in the effort to get better right if you're playing for fun you're not trying if you climb you climb that's cool if you lose you lose that's like it's still tilting and you still get pissed off and you're like why can't i climb or yada 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 but it's exactly what you were saying earlier where are they actually putting the effort in to climb so you you can do both but you will not succeed at both there's you can do both but you will not be happy with both you you got to focus on one or the other and decide on one or the other which is something that took me a while to do because i still tried to climb and have fun and that didn't work and now i've just decided i'm no longer going to climb and it was only the like last year that I, or end of last year that i decided that so yeah I, I, I also don't agree with that. I think I think you've just literally got to make the decision on what you want to do. Yeah, I mean, it's perfectly fine to to, to play to have fun uh, and try climb at the same time. Um, mm. It just won't be very successful, your climbing. Uh, I mean, like, you wouldn't be as successful as you possibly could be. Um, but yeah, uh, any any topics or any thoughts that you'd like to mention that we haven't covered in the, uh, in the topic so far? Um, I feel like a big thing that you have to try and realize is that you will never be as good as someone else at a video game. There's always going to be a faker, there's always going to be a that, there's always going to be a this. Um, you know, realizing your own strengths, realizing your own abilities in the game, realizing that actually, you know what, playing for fun, you realize, hold on, I can actually, if I actually put effort into this, I could climb. Then actually put the effort in and climb. Don't just keep saying it. Put the effort in and climb. Yeah. You know, so just you yourself have to figure out what is your end goal here. Do you want to tell your friends, yo, dudes, look at me, I'm gold. Like, if you say that to a high diamond player, they're not going to give a shit. They're going to be like, what the hell? That's not even an accomplishment. But if you say that to your silver friends, that's awesome. You know? yeah, you're always going to be low elo to someone. Yeah, like the... even challenger players are low elo to, to so world's players. Who you compare yourself to. I mean, cha yeah, challenger players are, are low elo compared to LCS. And then LCS is low elo compared to like uh, world's kind of standards. Yeah, exactly. So, so the thing is just... 
play decide are you going to try and do your best and climb or are you going to play for fun like she said either or off or perfectly okay i think that covered that that paragraph so you did <laughs> uh what's the tft what tft the champs have to go <laughs> yeah he's just basically explaining how the game works or how one of the um comps yeah comps works yeah but yeah no i definitely think that um everyone has the ability to climb higher you uh even if you are even myself i can climb higher if i reach even sheepy when he reached d2 he could climb higher it's just you have to like sheepy said earlier you have to try and find a way in which you can um break past that plateau because basically yeah. your climbing will never be straight up like this unless you are like smurfing like a, in the lowest elo yeah, that you can like a roller coaster it's all about being yeah. consistent and being at that peak point it's hard to maintain especially if you like start a plateau because it's mentally fatiguing as well as trying hard or playing optimally consistently is like something that can't you can't realistically keep up uh you have to improve to the point where your c game is that point if that makes any sense mm -hmm. but that's going into inchworm content which is a whole like our long conversation in itself um so like climbing it's i guess you could say it's an art it's something that you you learn to an extent uh i mean when you first started playing league did you just just play for fun with regards to solo queue like uh how did you how did your first interaction with the ladder like uh, affect you compared to like how you expected it to be I mean, I'm like most other people who haven't played ranked before. I was like most other people who haven't played ranked before. I was scared to play ranked because, you know, these people try hard. They're way better than me, this, that, the other. If you've never played ranked before, that just goes through your mind. The only way to get over that is to play ranked and to actually just get over it. Like, you know, you have to kind of force yourself to get over it because they are not... There's people that play for fun in ranked as well. There are people who are shit in ranked as well. Um the the my main interaction with league was though through friends and stuff like that you know like okay. i would play with friends is that how you back first in the day. found the game or was it through yeah mates? uh it was lazy lima was uh friends with my friends and we they became you know they started playing league together and then when i joined that friend group i played league with them so yeah i think um honestly just playing the game playing ranked um was what got me more into ranked the fact that i started to realize that it it didn't matter like i didn't care about when i was first playing i didn't care about win rates uh because every one of my friends was shit like you know most of the people back then were bad at the game like if you go to the um majority of the challenger players or high elo players back then right not very many of them are still high elo players now what like, do you think that is? Because Scaro put it very well. Um, Scaro said when he saw um, Korea won first worlds, SKT won the worlds, and he saw what Faker was capable of and what the Korean teams were capable of, he retired. Because he said, there is no ways I can reach that level of play. They were playing the game when it was still new, it was still relatively small. Yeah, there wasn't um, that many. They were, like, uh... Yeah, exactly smaller mechanics i guess yeah so the thing is that the the majority of people were not that um good even the higher elo players weren't that good i mean if you yeah. look at scarra now he's like diamond there's like boy boy who was still playing back then i'm a kitty pie who was still playing yeah, back then who are consistently... few, like, yeah the kind of, a few people who have like stayed on top i guess yeah uh, the, but that's the thing is like there's this is uh, the game's gotten a lot more difficult it's got because there are a lot more people playing and a lot better people playing um <clears throat> so he kind of says that the only mindset while playing ranked is my teams are my team are trash uh or my teammates are trash rather uh i don't think of them as humans I never had an easier time climbing like that i mean i kind of agree with you to an extent i mean uh, something that i read on res again is that you should treat your teammates as well as your enemy teams as like advanced ai bots so for example the ai bot mid lane is he if, if you don't spam ping him back because you see the jungler like looking to gank him it's your fault because you didn't give him that input that he's about to get ganked so it's your fault that he died they're not his if you have that mentality that whatever happens in the game is some way you could have affected that differently 
you're gonna have a lot better of a time to try both improve as well as decline than just blaming and like trying to stall out and saying that's your teams the whole time. Yeah. Uh, I, mean, I kind of agree yeah. with that. Not 100% though. You I mean, elaborate? you've got to, you've got to, uh, you, you've got to, you've got to take consideration into the fact that you can ping these people and they still won't play and you shouldn't necessarily always blame yourself for what other people are doing in your games. If you are consistently playing at the same level, you know, you ping the guy, you, you type in chat, the jungler's there, or the jungler's red buff, or you ping there and you ping the jungler. That means you're saying that the jungler is on his red buff, right? That's what I would, that's how I would do it when I was um, climbing or stuff like that. So basically the idea is it's not so much always your fault because it's not going to always be your fault. Some people just are not as good as the enemy player. It's happened yeah, to me before. I've gone against top lanes that are like a smurfing Cassiopeia and she might not have even been smurfing. She might have just been having a really good game, yeah. you know? This happens. It, it, it happens to everyone. So by blaming yourself for someone else being worse than the opposition, I don't necessarily agree with that, if that makes sense. Yeah, uh, kind of. But I mean, like, that's just the thing in the sense that, like, it doesn't mean they necessarily both advanced bots. It could be a beginner bot versus an advanced bot, but the, the mentality still stands that you should be sort of focusing on yourself and what you could have done differently to impact the game to the point where you could oh, yeah. no, definitely. sort of, like, yeah. Uh, Saying, oh no, my mid lane was just bad. That's why we lost. Yeah, but you, but you can't. You, I, I agree with that. You can't. You can't say that we lost that game because of the mid laner. But you gotta find if you if your only fault that game was I should have pinged my mid laner back. Then you're not looking at the game correctly because there's they, you obviously made other mistakes in the game where you yourself should be able to carry about fifty to sixty percent of your games, right? You should, especially as a jungle main, you should be able to impact the game enough in that aspect. But if you can't, um, if you can't see where your mistakes are, then you yeah, clearly you can't identify not them. looking at it correctly. I mean, uh, yeah. True. If you just say my junk, my my mid lane got ganked by the jungle, but what did you do to stop it? And you can't see it, then that's also your fault. Sorry about the dog, by the way. No, she goes stressed. a bit crazy. Um. Okay. I mean, I feel like we've covered a lot. Uh, yeah. Talked a lot. Uh. Any last second op uh, opportunity you guys been able to chat has anything they would like to ask? Uh, Dragon says he likes doggos. Same. She's awesome, dude. She's a little greyhound um, lurcher, and we rescued her here from. Oh, we got we adopted her from a rescue because over here you don't actually buy dogs unless they're pure breed, and then it's like a lot of money. So the majority of people will rescue their dogs. It's actually really nice. Didn't your your sister get the big dog or something? Yeah, she's got Bash. I think she's on your Discord. Very floofy dog. Yeah. They're kind of they're kind of friends, the two of them. Ah, uh, but uh, I don't know. I believe famous. We're doing this one v one. What is the what are the rules of for this uh, this game? But uh, jungling, uh, you're welcome to stay in the call if you want to. But otherwise, I, uh, I need to go eat some and chill. And enjoy the food, dude. Uh, thank you, thank you, thank you, guys, thank you for having me stream. If you guys haven't already seen Jungling, he does stream as well. I'll drop him an essay quickly. Uh, what's your stream schedule like, Ali? Uh, I stream every weekday from four, three, three onwards to about eight. But yeah, so thank you guys so much for uh, having me, uh, asking your questions and giving your comments. 100%. Uh, uh, I'll probably be uploading the VOD, like the full VOD to YouTube or something. Still working that one out. But if you guys do want to catch any, if you missed it, etc. But, uh, yeah. No worries. Thank you guys so much for having me. Uh, enjoy the rest of your stream, Sheepy, and peace out, peeps. Cool, cool, cool. Cheers, dude.